uh, organization of Buganda Kingdom and it was organized uh, in three aspects the social, political and economic. Uh, social organization based on clans they, they were organized in clans and each clan had a different uh, plant or animal species that to it identified it with. Others were uh, respecting plants uh, like mushrooms. Uh, others were respecting animals like a cow, a boa, a dog, like that. A boa, a jofu, like that. So clans were based on either plants or animals. Each clan had the, a, a, a head known as Mukulwechka, the head of the clan. Each, each clan was supposed to provide the Kabaka with a wife uh, that was uh, to, to, to bring about unity uh, uh, in the whole kingdom. So the Kabaka married from all what? From all clans. That was a sign of unity and representation at the palace. Uh, Bukanda divided into classes, e.g. the royals, those were the princes and the princesses. Abambeja, Nabam Abambeja, eh? Abambeja uh, and uh, Abanangira. So those were the royals. Uh, they were the nobles, the ones they called Abakungu. Uh, the commoners, the commoners were the peasants. That was the peasantry class of the commoners. Uh, then uh, the last clan, I mean the class, was the class of the slaves which they called Abadu or Abayiru in, in Unyoro. So Abadu, those were the slaves who were owned by the slave masters. So that was the social stratification in Buganda, the, 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 the classes that existed in Buganda. The Kabaka was a spiritual leader. Uh, spiritually, he was uh, the man in charge of all these uh, activities, initiation ceremonies head of the of the the the, the 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 traditional religion so he was the custodian of Lubale yes he was the custodian of Lubale and so the spiritual leader uh, they carried out to uh, they, they also had the uh, uh, small gods the Baganda had small gods like Chikibuka, Mukasa and so on in charge of Lake Lake Victoria in charge of Rainy all these gods, they were consulted in time of need. When they wanted the rain, they would consult those small gods. Uh, they believed in witchcraft, the ones they called Avaloko, and the, these ones would harm somebody, they would harm someone, or even bless when somebody wanted to, pro to produce, like, for example, twins, they would consult uh, these, the witchcraft guy, uh, people. And if somebody wanted to harm another, still, they would consult the, 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 the witchcraft uh, men. They also believed in herbalism, in, herb, in, 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 in traditional herbalism. Uh, the traditional herbalists, uh, they called them Abasau, Abasau Bechiganda, those traditional herbalists. So herbalists were also instrumental in the Kigana society. Uh, these ones were also consulted in time of sickness or in times of other kinds of uh, blessings. They believed in supernatural powers, supernatural powers, uh, powers, especially the, the, the powers of, of the ancient people like the dead, powers, uh, the, the powers of the dead, or even the ghosts, that the ghosts would come to haunt people. Even the ghosts of the dead would have uh, some powers on the living. So they believed in supernatural powers, especially the powers of the dead, who came in form of ghosts. They dressed in bark cloth. Uh, this bark cloth, Lugugo, they called it Lugugo. Believe in, I mean, dressed in bark clothes. And even when somebody died, they would wrap him into the bark clothes. And the, they believed that the body would not even rot if it was wrapped in what? In a bark cloth. Marriage was polygamous. They married many women, and of course, uh, the way they could, uh, they married as many wives as they wanted. But the Kabaka was married from all what clans. That is the social setup. They believed uh, the way they lived socially. Then politically, the Kabaka was the head. He was the head of the 
of the, uh, the kingdom. The old powers were invested in him. He practiced a centralized administration that all powers originated from him, from the Havaka and then downwards. Downwards to who? To others. Uh, the system of administration was very hereditary, as we just see, that the son replaced uh, the, 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 the father. But which son? The one who had been chosen early enough by the leading ministers to succeed his dad. All powers were for the Havak. He had the, he had the powers to promote, to demote, and appoint. Yes, he was the one supposed to do that. He would appoint, promote, and demote. He was assisted by the Prime Minister, the ones they called the, the Katikiro. That was the Prime Minister assisted the Havaka uh, in his administration. Uh, the Havaka almost had the same powers, yes, like the ones of the what? Of the Kawaka. But it was the Kawaka who would promote, appoint, and demote. The Kawaka, the Katikiro did not have those powers. However, he assisted the Kawaka in terms uh, of absence when he was not around. There were chiefs, chiefs that assisted in the kingdom, for example, the nobles, clan heads, county heads, eh, Abakungu, Abama Kumbura, Abama Saza, all those in charge of the subdivisions, counties, uh, sub counties, and all others. Uh, for his administration, the kingdom was divided into counties, uh, that was for his administration, and there were several counties that existed in Uganda. The role of the chiefs were to, was the role of the chief or the chiefs was to mobilize people. People for what? For taxation, for for public works, uh, the call for unity. So that was the role of the what? Of the chiefs. There was a legislature, a legislative assembly in Uganda which they called Luchiko. The Luchiko it was composed of so many people from all counties and all appointed by uh, the Kawaka. There was a standing army of Abambowa, Abambowa which was in, used for imperial what? Congress. Then we had economic agriculture, the Bakabon, domesticated animals, uh, and of course agriculture, agriculture was uh, basically on uh, crops for sale and those for uh, uh, for for eating. They domesticated animals. Uh, fishing on Lake Victoria uh, was also done by those who lived around the, uh, the lakes. Then uh, hunting for wild game, uh, back cloth making. Uh, uh, even uh, iron working, uh, trade goods, raids, and the and the trade, both internal and external. Uh, because of this, the the, the, the economy was uh, was uh, able to sustain the Chiganda society. Mm. Mm. Because of the fishing, uh, the hunting, back cloth making. Iron work. By the way, they were good iron workers. They were good iron workers, uh, and it is from this that they did a lot of. I mean, they manufactured a lot of items. Example, uh, arrows for for hunting and for fighting. Like the other Kavaka, who was a specialist in fighting in the air, Semakokiro, that he would send a what an arrow directly into the head of the enemy. The long distance trade was very instrumental in the Chigan, the growth of the Buganda economy. It is from this trade that uh, they got uh, a lot of items from the Arabs and this is where they even got uh, the early monopoly over the guns. The guns that uh, were used for imperial conquest extending the boundaries of the what? Of, of the kingdom. Uh, they also had the tributes. Tributes, these were got, these were taxes. Taxes from the conquered areas. Conquered areas like Usoga 
and you would wekula, gomba, blah, 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 blah. That's where they got the taxes. And these taxes were also good in expanding uh, the economy of Uganda. They carried out raids. Raids were carried out on the neighbors. And uh, what was uh, the, the reason for this? They carried out raids for women. They raided for women. They even raided for cattle and other goods. So from a, from a successful raid, a successful raid would, would yield a lot for the kingdom. So they would carry everything raided uh, to their kingdom. There was also another source of revenue, and that was taxation. This was internal, not these tributes which were were uh, uh, levied on the conquered states. So the internal taxation also was uh, to add or to supplement on the economies. So from this, the agriculture which was based on growing basically crops for sale and for, for subsistence, uh, domestication of animals like, like uh, goats, cows, and even rearing of chicken, Fishing on Lake Victoria, for those who live around the shore. Hunting, hunting for wild game, hunting for wild game to get the meat for eating and for sale. Black cloth making for selling to the Arabs, exchanging with the Arabs and even the other neighbors. Iron working where they got items for defense and for agriculture. Tributes from the conquered states, raids on the neighbors and taxation. It meant that the economy was well sustained. So to recap, this is how Buganda Kingdom was very well organized. And from all this, it was a very uh, uh, well organized uh, uh, empire. Socially, it was good, based on those politically, fair centralization and economic backbone, all okay. So from here we look at a well-organized polity, that is Uganda Kingdom. And all this is what sustained it to grow and exist for long uh, up to the 20th century, eh? having started rising from the 8th, 9th, and up to the 20th. And as I said, by the 20th century, it was no more. When we come back, we shall see why could the, couldn't the kingdom go beyond the 20th century? And those are factors for the decline of the empire.